I'll be honest. Until last week, I had never heard of PDS-70. Or if I had, I don't remember. It's not a name that sticks in the mind. While it may sound like a tax form or a top-end graphics card, it is in fact a star, also known as V1032 Centauri, which, while not an improvement, at least gives an idea where it is. Among astronomers, though, it seems to have a cult following, with one of the papers I read describing it as iconic, because it is, quote, the only confirmed planetary system in formation. Really? The only one? Perhaps the only one of that specific age, but... Anyway. PD... No, that doesn't work. Mr. 70 is believed to be about 5.4 million years old. It is a T-Towery protostar, a star still powered by the energy of its own collapse that has not yet begun fusion in its core. All stars less than two solar masses, including our own, were once T-Towery stars. Mr. 70's mass, at three-quarters that of the Sun, indicates that it will mature into a K-type orange dwarf, a slightly dimmer star than our own Sun, but destined to live three times longer. About half of T-Towery stars are surrounded by cloaks of gas and dust known as protoplanetary disks, with many showing gaps indicating planetary formation. Mr. 70 was discovered in the Pico dos Dias Observatory Survey, hence the name, heck, let's just call it Pico, a subset of the 1983 IRS Infrared Survey specifically aimed at pre-main sequence stars. It was identified as a T-Towery variable in 1992, and in 2006, the European Southern Observatory's Very Large Telescope found that it was encircled by a protoplanetary disk with a radius of about 140 AU four times the distance to Pluto. Which seems like a lot, but is fairly typical for a protoplanetary disk. In 2012, a gigantic 65 AU gap, that's nearly twice the distance to Pluto, was found in the disk, which subsequent studies showed was not homogeneous and indicated the presence of multiple forming planets. And in 2018, the Very Large Telescope found one. PDS-70b a super-Jupiter orbiting at 21 AU, or about the orbit of Uranus. Despite this, the planet, due to its extreme youth, is believed to retain a temperature topping a thousand kelvins, and clouds of silica and iron. In 2019, the VLT found a second planet in the gap, this one at 34 AU, or roughly Pluto's distance, locked in a near 1-2 to two resonance with the first. Pico C is even larger, with its most likely mass being about 7.5 times Jupiter's, or halfway to brown dwarfhood. Models predicted, and observations ultimately confirmed, that both these prepubescent planets possess accretion disks of their own, the kind of nascent empires that in our solar system produce the Galilean moons of Jupiter, or Saturn's moon Titan. Spectral observations suggest that B's circumplanetary disk is accreting matter at a rate equivalent to the large asteroid Vesta every year, and that the disk must be roughly three times the radius of Jupiter, which is surprisingly small. And then, in July 2019, astronomers employing the Atacama Large Millimeter Array made the first ever direct detection of a circumplanetary disk around C, a freeze frame of the chaos of creation and the system keeps on giving. In just the last two months, Pico has revealed two utterly unprecedented discoveries that shed both light and darkness on our understanding of our origin. The first, on the 6th of June, was announced by a team employing the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, with which they identified a dust clump at B's L5 point. Lagrange points, essentially gravitational dead zones that follow an orbiting body at specific locations, are some of the oddest consequences of Newtonian mechanics. Anything that falls into them can become trapped in an orbit precisely aligned to the orbit of the main body. If they were frozen in time, they would appear as ornaments hanging from the same line. Both James Webb and the Gaia telescope currently reside at Earth's L2 point, a safe spot just beyond the moon. The largest of these zones are the L4 and L5 points, which unfurl from the main body like cosmic wings. Jupiter has a whole swarm of asteroids, comparable in mass to the asteroid belt itself, 
filling its L4 and L5 points to bursting. Because the first of these asteroids to be discovered were named Achilles, Hector, and Patroclus, these asteroids are now known as Trojans, a word since expanded to include any object lodged in another's L4 or L5 points. To be clear, a Trojan cloud is not a reality-breaking discovery. In fact, Earth has a few as well, called the Kordolevsky clouds, which were first identified in the 1960s but not confirmed until 2018. But these clouds are just wisps, so insubstantial that in 1992, a Japanese space probe passed through them without seeing them. Pico B's Trojan cloud, on the other hand, is on an entirely different scale. It has a mass roughly that of the moon, and might mark the birth of a small planet. Studies by Gregory Lachlan and John E. Chambers in 2002 showed that Trojan planets of equal mass can survive in their orbits for the age of the solar system. These are obviously not of equal mass, but perhaps offer an even more enticing prospect. For centuries, the question of how we gained our moon has infuriated cosmologists. Over time, nearly every possible origin has been suggested. That the moon split off from Earth, or was captured, or formed much like Jupiter's moons did, from a circumplanetary disk. Other than capture, which was simply too unlikely, astronomers could not agree on which model was correct. Then the Apollo mission broke everything. Analysis of the third of a ton of lunar rock and dust brought back by the various crews revealed that the Earth and the Moon had broadly similar compositions, which immediately ruled out capture, but in different proportions, which ruled out fission or co-accretion. More bizarrely, the Moon's geology was found to be even more depleted of volatile substances, like water, than Earth's. Somehow, despite being of the Earth, the Moon's birth was even more infernal than that of its parent. It was then that an alternate vision began to evolve. In this scenario, the Earth was not born one planet, but in a Trojan co-orbit with a Mars-sized sibling. Then, in the jostling chaos of the early solar system, their configuration became unstable, and the sister planet, named Thea, collided with the Earth, sending material into orbit, which coalesced into the Moon. This hypothesis explained both the similarities and the differences between the Earth and the Moon, as well as the hellish temperatures of its formation. There was only one problem. There was no way to prove it. Now, for the first time, Pico has provided a snapshot of a system like ours once was, and a scenario much like was predicted, suggesting not only that such events are probable, they are common. And then, in July 2023, James Webb got a gander at Pico and discovered something that completely obliterated expectations. Water. Detecting water in extrasolar systems, even forming systems, is certainly not new. But this water was located closer to its star than Earth is to the Sun. Our vision of the solar system's formation posits that region as a desiccated wasteland, where water would be broken up into its component atoms by the star's ultraviolet radiation. And yet... There are ways in which such a reservoir might be sustained. In their paper announcing the discovery, the authors suggest that water might be continuously flowing downward from the outer reaches of Pico's star system, ensuring that water remains in that region even as it is destroyed. Alternatively, the water may be chemically bound to complex silicates, which would allow it to survive temperatures that simple, unbound water would not. PDS-70 might not be the most inspiringly named system ever discovered might not be a stepping stone on the search for extrasolar life. But it offers an image of a star system at a crucial stage in its formation, during which many of the events took place which in our system led to worlds, life, and ourselves.